Coverage for Rapid TCT 2023 here in Chicago is brought to you by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out in the link in the description. Okay, so we're here at Rapid TCT 2023, and we are here with Pantheon, and I have Logan here. So if you're familiar, last year at Rapid, they had their Pantheon machine here, the HS3. And while it was printing last year, and I loved it, it's it's now a refined thing. You can, you can buy these now, right? They're pretty much done. Yeah, right? we're shipping units every week, four to six week lead time, and our web store is running, we're selling filament, we're selling printers, we're getting them out the door. Awesome. So what's changed on this machine in the past year? Because some of it does look quite familiar and yeah. some of it's, you know, we, we've got some metal cladding on the side. Um, I see a new screen. You're running Clipper now, is that correct? Yeah, so we've got Clipper. We've got the same motion frame from last time, you know, servos, ball screws, floating frame, kinematic bed, that's all the same, but now we're running Clipper. Got a metal box instead of the acrylic box that we were shipping with. Just holds the heat better, looks nicer in my opinion. Yeah, we have some insulating in there, we got LEDs. Yeah, redid the entire filament box. So that's all brand new, totally new units, full stainless steel, sealed, all that. And then, yeah, that pretty much covers it. We really wanted Clipper because we were so tired of not having a screen. Okay. Like having a screen on the machine is nice, along with the other technology, like the other advancements in motion control, mostly it's the screen. So previously it was running RepRap firmware on Duet 3s? Duet, Duet 3s, okay. and now I believe we're running a Big Tree tech board and Clipper, so okay. we switched over, yeah. And you did that for, you wanted the screen, which RepRap does have screens, but were there other reasons you wanted Clipper versus RepRap? Yeah, part of it was remote access for like service and maintenance, and then we just like the ability to work with the screens here and the code base was easier to work with in Clipper. The way it's written makes it easier for our team to work with it. Okay, so you, yeah, because these machines are kind of, these are higher price machines, what's the current cost of one of these? 10 grand, US. 10 grand, so because these are higher end machines, you're offering a level of support that you're not gonna find on some consumer level machine. So being able to actually remote into a client's machine, diagnose and fix problems remotely, is a huge thing for you and Clipper allows you to do that. So. Yeah, it's been a big plus for us so far. It's really kind of got us out of some binds with the early machines that we sent out. So for those unfamiliar with the HS3 printer, what makes it special? Like obviously there's a there's a lot more going on here. There's a lot more beef to this machine than your average off-the-shelf 3D printer. Yeah, the just the quality of the components and the quality of our build process. You know, if you want to make an accurate part, your machine needs to be accurate to a whole nother level above that. And that's really what we were going for here. So we get the comment a lot like overbuilt, but if you want to move fast and precise, you it's built exactly to do that. So so what's driving the motion here? We have servos and ball screws, right? Yeah, yeah. So servos, servos, ball screws, no belts anywhere, and then obviously our patented Z plate mounted to the top plate yep. so we hold our bed in plane with the rest of the axes instead of with the ground and that's how we're just damping vibration on the machine to keep moving as quickly as we are and then we've had a lot of development in the printhead itself so on the printhead here it does look a little familiar compared to last year so what have you changed on it? what have you improved well with the switch to uh, clipper we can run can bus to the board so we've got a whole kind of setup that we've built ourselves up there to do monitoring at the printhead rather than the computing at the back of the printer. And the hot end, it's still the slice based hot end? Yes, the hot end is still mounted exactly like the Mosquito. We've licensed that with slice, 100 watt heat block, and then. For the extruder, that looks custom, correct? But it does. Are those yes. the Bontec large gears in there or the Bontec? Uh... Yes, we're running the Bontech large gears and then the full aluminum body is all custom to us with the force gauge in the extruder so that we can do the touching off the bed. So you are doing nozzle probing on the bed. Awesome. Yeah, we did true nozzle probing. Okay, yeah. cool. And for the actual construction of this printer, it's actually quite simple because this black aluminum plate that you see here is machined in, and everything on this printer is actually attached to this plate itself. So it's, it's not like a traditional printer where you have your, your bed mounted to the outside frame. Everything is mechanically fixed and rigid to this plate. So one, that makes assembly quite simple actually with this machine, right? Yeah, really straightforward. Almost think like Ikea furniture in the way that it 
itself aligns as you're putting parts together. And also, another benefit of that is because everything is indexed and attached to this one solid plate, if the printer's shaking around, you don't really need to worry about anything coming out of skew because it's, again, everything is referenced off this one single plate. Um, and if you're curious on how you build one of these printers, uh, Joel Telling actually visited them in Canada, in Vancouver, and built one. In fact, he actually- Joel built this one. He built this one. It's <laughs> actually signed right here. So yeah. I'll link that video in the description if you want to check it out. So that is the Pantheon HS3. I want to thank Logan again for giving us an overview of this printer. If you're interested in it or want to know more, make sure you check out their link in the description below. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. Cheers. So we're here with Don from BOFA, and we're going to be talking about printer enclosures and specifically filtration. So for those that have built a Voron or any of the other common open source design, you may be familiar with something called the Nevermore or alternatives to it, where you're basically running activated carbon, uh, activated carbon charcoal as a filter system to remove the, the particles and the smells within a printer. But that is a, it's a finite shelf life. Usually you have to replace the material every like 50 hours or so. So for those that are actually serious about it, want the best kind of air in their house and they're, they're printing a ton of ABS where those 50 hour replacement cycles doesn't make sense, there's this system. So can you explain what we're looking at here? Absolutely, so this is a simulator just showing with a fog machine the particulates as well as the fume that is in the enclosure and it's circulating through into our fume extractor and as you can see there's a HEPA filter here as well as a carbon filter. So HEPA filter would take out the nano particulates and the carbon filter will take out any of the VOCs or the odors in the air. Okay, so the reason something like this would last longer than a traditional setup, is it the type of charcoal you're using or the carbon or the extra filter or is it just the amount. Uh, so what's the reason you're getting more life out of this? Because this lasts months, right? It does. It lasts about six to 12 months, depending upon uh, the, the usage, the time usage, as well as the type of materials that are being ran through the system. But what it, what it is, is it's really the, the media in the filtration. So with the HEPA filter, it is a, a very specific type of media that's being used, as well as the design. And then also it is an activated carbon. Okay. With the DIY setups, usually this filter system is built in the enclosure itself because you're, you're circulating the air, so you're turning the enclosure into essentially a convection oven to get yourself more heat inside. So this system, you are actually sucking the air out, but it is being fed back into the printer or in the enclosure in this case. Is that Absolutely. Correct? Yep, that is correct. Yep. And so the reason for that is to help to keep the temperature within the enclosure so it's not really, you know, moving from higher temps to lower temps, yeah. right? Um, now, speaking of high temperatures, this is something I actually just kind of found out. Um, most activated charcoal is only good to about 60 C, is that correct? That is correct. It so. starts to degradate at 60 C. So if, if you're running activated, like normal activated charcoal, you would find on like Amazon or whatever, in an enclosure and you're hitting 60 C, it's actually not working, it's right? It's not working, that oh. is correct. So we, we have a high temp unit. It's just a little bit of a different type of system that, that we would make it work. So for this one here now, I see you have different size units in the back there. What kind of, is this the size you would need for a machine of like an enclosure of this volume? Yes. Okay, now can you handle multiple enclosures off the same system or does everything need its own separate uh, BOFA unit? So we do recommend having a one for one and the reason behind that is if you need to change out the filter, then you're only changing that out for one system, right? But we do have larger systems that we could have a Y type of a hose Okay. It, that could go to two systems potentially, but again, it would be a larger uh, okay. type of unit. Okay. And is it just the enclosures you sell or is there any like, for those wanting more of a DIY solution, is that possible or you have to buy an assembled unit? Is that So we actually don't sell the enclosure, but so many people have been asking us about this. So okay. we may be selling it in the future, um, but at the moment we are selling the just systems. The unit. So it's more about the technology, okay. just from you know our innovation in regards to filtration. Okay, so for somebody who's running like a, a, a Voron build or something that's already enclosed, you can just mount this right to it, a few mm -hmm. minor modifications. Absolutely. But if you're wanting to run it on like an Ender, for example, you're gonna to have to figure out an enclosure and then adapt this system to it. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. Mm -hmm.